All right, for sure. This is an interview with the man, the myth, the legend, Miss. Oh, I, I don't know. I'll let I'll let him introduce himself so I don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, as Oscar said, I'm the man, the myth, the legend. I'm Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'm Andrew Wynn, but you probably know me more as Drew. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Drew. And uh, I'm the interview guy, Oscar. And uh, yeah, let's get things going. So uh, I guess to start things off, uh, I wanted to ask you, like, like, what's your story? Like, your theater background, any upbringing, and like, uh, whatever, however you want to answer that. Okay, so... I guess for me, theater started back in high school, around like 2011 or so. And then that was when I started drama class. I started doing a lot of acting back then. And then when I moved over to uh, Chafee, the Chafee College, that's when I started doing more things. I started to like, that was around the time I stopped acting as well, because I kind of got bored of that. So then I just started directing stuff. I started writing. And then a couple years later, I moved over to Cal Poly and then I kept just doing the same thing I keep doing. That's cool. That's what's up. Uh, me and Drew have a history, a Chafee history. We, we both went there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, well, for this play, your play is titled My Roommate is a demon um what was your writing process like like um yeah what was it like and like how long did it take to formulate the whole story and plot and characters and whatnot okay so for my roommate is a demon it kind of my writing process started out with like just figuring out what what am i going to do with this play uh how long is it going to be like what what am i going to do and one of the, the big things I wanted to focus on was kind of just to let the audience just experience a story. Like just first and foremost, like these people do X, people do Y, and then the play, uh, the play ends. So with that, I kind of just wrote it as a basic, like just a one scene, people come in, uh, they kind of do the most outlandish things, and then the play ends. Like I didn't really want to add any, um, uh kind of underlying themes with it i just wanted it to be how can i make the audience laugh as hard or as loud as i can in the span of let's say like seven minutes yeah that's awesome i'm pretty sure there it's gonna be a lot of laughter around the world <laughs> <laughs> yeah had, yeah had fun with it um Well, because I remember when you you wrote the this was a, a play that you wrote for Bernardo's playwriting class, and we, we all had for the final that whole week uh, all of the playwrights were able to, you know, select people from the class to read their plays. So, what well, what was it like for you to have, you know, other people and actors read read your words aloud and manifest it? Um, it's kind of, it's a, it's very different because, um, I haven't had anyone like read or like actually perform my stuff for a long time since Chafee. So Chafee was like only one instance where I actually had someone like perform my work. So when it came back to this, it was kind of daunting because I'm always used to like reading it myself or having the voices in my head literally just read it out for me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was actually a very a very different process. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you mean right there. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool though. Um yeah. Awesome. And uh next question. Um like do you have any like inspirations like when it comes to your work? Like do you have any like favorite plays? playwrights or any like mm, tv shows or any other media 
that like inspire your artistic uh vision uh yeah a lot of a lot of things actually um for my roommate is a demon specific uh, for my roommate is a demon specifically um a lot of like the comedy and the instances even the title my roommate is a demon it came from a lot of uh anime that i was watching because i got the inspiration you know they have like these really long and like very simple um titles so i was like yeah okay i'll take that and then when i was during the process of writing this i was watching a lot of um sitcoms a lot of uh, satire shows so like i was watching a lot of south park i was watching a lot of it's always sunny in philadelphia and i took like that very outlandish very like in your face comedy and then i said okay so what am i going to do with this place and well might as well just throw in a demon in in there and see what happens <laughs> yeah for sure yeah demons are very fun very very fun yeah yeah i don't, I don't know your your piece is just really great and i can't can't wait I'm happy for you can't wait to can't wait till the whole thing entire thing premieres and yeah people get to applaud your work <laughs> <laughs> yeah um this very very tricky instance that a lot of writers go through whenever it happens but what is your approach when it comes to writer's block so with writer's block um the big like the big realization for me since i've been writing for since i've been writing like long form media so like books plays i've been writing a lot of that since 2014 and during those times i've had a lot of like instances of what would be called writer's block and the best way i found for me personally to get over that hump is to um watch other people's work read other people's work read plays read books like try to soak up as much like information as you can because somewhere in there is going to be like that spark that'll like reignite your uh your uh your patch and be like okay i can keep going from here i can keep going from here like uh having as much like inf uh, inspiration from other people's work will help you break free from writer's block and it's also a matter of time you can't just break free from it instantly or like through like one day of something it's sometimes it'll take a week sometimes it'll take a month but eventually you're going to get rid of it yeah truer words never spoken i know i get what exactly what you mean yeah yeah i've done that myself where like I get away from it and then I'll I'll watch other things and then like it'll spark up a um yeah, a new plot development. So yeah. It's pretty cool. And um uh, would you write a I mean you you said it you wrote a you wrote a bunch of other written works in the past, but like <laughs> would you write another would you write a would you ever want to write another like, like, a play, uh, in the th in the theater world or in the theater world? Um, yeah, sure. Maybe one day I'll like do a follow up to my roommate as a demon, because like the thing about the way I write is that I don't like odd numbers, so I always like my stories always come in pairs of two. So, when it comes to that, I know um. Or when I wrote the mixtape musicals that I wrote one I was like okay this isn't enough for me so I wrote another one and then I was done with that so then I wrote a third one I was like why not I couldn't hurt then I couldn't end it at three because three sounded weird so then I just said I'll just end it at four and that's where the fourth one came in but like yeah I'm sure to have um I love to see my uh musicals like uh in a full production I'd love to see like other productions of my roommate of the demon like any any other work like if they want to uh put on my work and go for it <laughs> go for it <laughs> <laughs> uh, go for it you know yeah 
Yeah. All right. Um, for sure. Cool. Uh, thank you for stopping by. My roommate is a demon. Is one of the plays that will be produced for the Student One Acts titled Twenty Twenty, which is a bunch of compilation works piled up uh, by all of the students from school. And you'll be able to catch Drew's play himself. Uh, for his, I don't know. You'll be able to watch his material be presented and and applauded and stuff like that. And yeah, thank you for stopping by. No so, problem. All right, for sure.